In today's quick Thursday tip, we're gonna talk about the Power App switch function. So the switch function is very similar to if, it allows you to write a little less code as long as it fits the parameters you need, and just one I haven't covered before, so I thought I'd do that. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today's show is about Power Apps switch function. And so switch and if, they basically do the same thing. And I found over time that my brain thinks in terms of ifs instead of switch. So I've never incorporated switch in any of my videos. So today we're gonna to cover the switch function, show you how to use it to do some text stuff, how to launch it into different screens, how to even do evaluations inside the switch, what I didn't know I could do until about four hours ago. So should be fast, should be fun. The good news also, if you have any questions about why does my background keep changing, like I do, we'll talk about that at the end. So anyway, let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. I thought the first thing I'd do is just run you through this quick little app I made to have fun with it, right? So who do you think Chewy's favorite person is? Well, you could do me. Nope, oh, close. You could do Daniel, who's that? Or you could do Chewy, bingo! So here you can see that I'm just gonna show you different ways to react based off of what's done here, right? And that's gonna be a simple label, that's an easy one. But then what I also wanted to be able to do was have a uh, button that would activate and do different behaviors also using switch, which I don't ever do, right? And so here you can see if I choose Chewy, button the switch, Chewy says, good job, yay! But if we reset it and we choose like Daniel and then we do button with a switch, what? <laughs> so a little bit of fun, nothing too complicated. So the way that switch works is, well, let's just pull the code open and show you. So the idea of switch is that you can evaluate one property or one thing and against different values. So here I'm saying, hey, the drop down one selected value. If it is Shane, then I want the output to be the word close. If the uh, drop down says Nicola, then only when she has food, Daniel who and Chewy bingo. So this was this is all it is, right? And if you think about it, that is no different than right here beside it. I have an if that does the same thing but this is what it looks like in an if, right? And with if, a lot of you have a hard time remembering that you know when you want a multiple criteria evaluation, that you have to rewrite it again, right? So it has to be drop down one selected value equals Shane, then close. Oh, if that's false, then do the whole evaluation again. So as you can see, both are doing the same exact thing. The syntax, the, the wording is just a little bit different between the two. And so for a lot of people, you know, especially like Daniel, Daniel's a big fan of Switch. He really likes the way that this works. And it's because, you know, for him, it's like, hey, I only had to type this in once and then I just run down here with my parameters and then I can close out. Now, if we throw another label on here real quick, let's just throw this, pull it down a little bit so we can see it. So to write our switch, right, we could just do something like, hey, switch, all right, like so. And then we probably need something to evaluate against. So let's just throw another, let's throw a text input on here, right? So I'll grab a text input and then we'll pull that down as well, right? And so that is text input one. And so we're just gonna say, hey, if switch, if text input one, right? I gotta spell it right though. I gotta put my fingers on the right keys to type, it turns out. So there you go. So if text input one text, and then, so now it's saying, hey, what is the match value? So we're gonna say, if it matches red, then we're going to just put out, and because we're on a label, we can only output text, right? So we can just say, they chose red, right? They chose red. And so then we could do another one. We could do blue, same type of thing. They chose blue. Oh, I've got to put that in quotes though. And then finally, maybe we want to also take advantage of the fact we could have a catch all. So if they didn't type red, they didn't type blue, then we would just say they chose neither, neither red or blue, like that. And so then now you can see that our little drop down right now, it says, hey, they chose neither red nor blue. And if we go over here now, and we just go to play mode real quick. So if I type in red, we get red. If we type in blue, we get blue, right? So I realize that's a really silly example, but what I really want you to understand more is the mechanics of how this works. And if we do like format text, they'll break this out for us and make it easier to read, right? So if they choose red, they do red, blue, blue. And then this here, and you can see it highlighted up here at the fault. This is the default result. This is what we do if all of those uh, were misses, which is important to remember also because a lot of times you do want to have a default value. And so far I've used like a drop down and text input, but you could do 
um, any of the inputs, obviously, you could go look up some data from, you know, SQL, CDS, SharePoint, wherever you want to get data. It doesn't matter what it is, but whatever is right here, you're just saying, if this is equal to this, then do this, okay? So if we go look now at the button, right, the button's a little more, I don't want to say complicated, but a little different. So if we click on the button with a switch, pull this down. So here it's the same type of thing. We'll just do the format text again. That was kind of nice. So um, I don't even know why I had that. Let's get rid of that portion. So we're just saying switch. And so if the drop down selected value is Shane here, then navigate to the meh screen. If it's Nicola, navigate to screen two. If it's Daniel, navigate to screen two. And if it's Chewy, set a variable. So this is that reminder that you can do um, additional things, right? You have the ability to do a function here. So in a label, a label expects you to have text. So I had to do uh, a text output, but a button expects you to have a actionable function. And so that's how we were able to create this experience, right? And this particular one doesn't have a default right now. So if we have nothing up here, we do this, nothing's happening, right? We didn't set a behavior if none of those things matches. Now, if I looked at this code, what I'd probably do though is I'd be like, hey, look, both Nicola and Daniel navigate to screen two. So really Shane and Chewy are the only ones that have special behaviors. So it might just delete those two out. Oh, delete that extra comma. There you go. We'll kind of do that. And then we can just come after the set and be like, all right. So if none of those were true, then we can, uh, we'll just navigate off to screen two, right? So then now, regardless whether they choose nothing, it'll go to screen two. If they choose Nicola, it goes to screen two. But if they choose uh, Shane, we go here to the meh screen, okay? So those are some of the different ways that we think about uh, switches. One of the things I didn't know Switch did until this morning when Daniel told me, because he's a nice guy, is that you can also add evaluations up here. So what if we said, hey, we only want to, if, if they selected Shane, right, that's the criteria, we could put an if inside of here. We could say, well, and if they did that, and um, how about this? day of week or weekday, it's called weekday. If weekday for uh, today, doo -doo, right? So this is just a function that returns uh, the, the current day equals, what is today? Wednesday, so it'd be the fourth day. So if we did this, right? So weekday outputs four. So if four, if today is a Wednesday it equals four, then we want to navigate away we got close our if statement there. If it doesn't, then we would navigate to screen two, right? So we're only giving Shane a meh on Wednesdays. So there you go. So then now if we press this button, we should still go to the meh screen if we choose Shane, right? So Shane and then, oh, nope, it's not firing. So what did I do wrong? There you go, I got a typo. So if this, oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't close my if again. There we go. Back in here. So we should go to the meh screen. If we go in and change the code and say only on Thursdays, which was the fifth day of the week, then we would do that. We'd say button with a switch. And so then it's what, right? So you have the different functionality um, that you want. So I thought that was an interesting use. I'll be honest, my brain doesn't think in switches, so I don't use them very often. Daniel's brain thinks in switches, so Daniel uses them all the time. So, so it, it, it's your mileage might vary, because everything that we showed you with switch, we can do with if, but as we kind of saw in these two comparisons, right, there's a little bit of, a little bit more code has to be written, if you will, but to me, that's just a little more flexible and a little, a little easier for me. All right, so either way, Hopefully you like this quick little uh, rundown on the switch function. Uh, if there's other functions you'd like to see in these quick little quick Thursday tip uh, videos, let me know. I'm happy to make them. I've kind of got a running list of these little five to 10 minute videos that just really kind of help people. Also, if you're thinking, Shane, what did you do in your office? Well, it has been orange for about 10 years and now it is gray. And so now that it is gray, it's kind of a little weird, but but we have some visions of, we're gonna put some shelves up back here and kind of get you back to seeing some of the things. What I'd really like to do is make it so you could see a little bit wider. Maybe we have Chewy sitting on the couch. I don't know. We're gonna kind of start designing back there, but literally the paint is still curing. Like I smell paint fumes right now. Um, so it's gonna be a few days, a couple of weeks probably before I get all the background settled, but hopefully we'll get back to it. If you have any suggestions for what the background should look like, I'm all ears for that too. All right. That's enough. So with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. 
Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.